How's it going guys, RXXC here, and I am finally getting around to doing my deck profile for my uh, Momocon deck that I had put together. Um, just a note off the back, it's Mono Ventus. Um, if I had a choice to actually make my true competitive deck to bring to a tournament, it probably wouldn't be Mono Ventus. It's not the best thing in the world like whatsoever. Um, so I'm not telling you that this is the most competitive deck. I will say, um, in and out of official matches, uh, you know, how they were kind of doing it, the, the win three, get in the cage thing. I did a couple of those. I spent most of my time just playing fun matches with friends against some relatively competitive decks. Um, I, I probably went, I don't know, about seven and four or six and three on the weekend. Kind of, kind of half and half, but a, a little more in my favor. Uh, so does this deck win? Yes. Um, Probably the only reason that does happen is the way I built it, which we'll talk about while I get into it. But first, go, let's go ahead and talk about the characters. Um, first off is Trox Ultra. Um, uh, first note, I would definitely not use the diamond version like I have been using uh, because it does not open as well. For whatever reason, don't know if it's a different factory or whatever, sometimes it will just pick, pick up a core and just drop it down and not open. And then it doesn't matter if it stays on it, it's great. But if it doesn't pick it up at all, you can't use the dang Bakugan, so I would definitely use the normal version, not the diamond version. Um, that's just me, uh, moving forward. Uh, I have Mantanoid Ultra, who's great with his Evo and stuff like that. It's with 600B power at the start. Uh, very fun. Trox's ability, I normally wouldn't be using because I have like Winton or something. I didn't want to blow through all my deck because of some reasons that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, Mantanoid Ultra is really nice, though. Uh, a double core grabber, usually. Uh, probably about... Mm, 60, 60 to 55 percent of the time he'll pick up two cores for me uh, and I really like that so uh, and then last uh, but not least definitely uh, is uh, Orlis Dragonoid Ultra which is kind of a new guy some people don't have him yet uh, he's a 504 who comes with a magical shield and a red fist really interesting because of its Evo and uh, we'll kind of get into that here in a second um, I didn't bring the cores out here because kind of arbitrary um, the way I use the cores was just pretty much B power. So if you see a helix, I use the 500 uh, minus one helix or whatever just to get me a boost. Um, the green fist was just a normal green fist and the shield was just a 300 shield. Uh, and the magical shield and the red fist obviously are the two best ones. Uh, kind of straightforward stuff. So 650, 253 uh, or whatever it is. Um, looking back on it, I'd probably actually because I didn't depend on my cores that much or anything. It's not like this is like a Nilius deck or something like that. Because I didn't depend on those things, um, two of these I'd probably turn into a trap. Uh, I never really play with traps in in my time. Um, I just really don't bother with them. Uh, I, I'd rather use my cores to my advantage. But dealing with this deck and uh, seeing how it played against other people, I think a trap core or two actually would have been a little bit of been a little bit beneficial um but let's go ahead and get into the deck um it's not your i'd say classic mono ventus deck because i really didn't focus too hard on the energy ramping um but let's go, let's talk about the evos real quick uh one thing about this deck is it has some resurgence stuff and i did not have all of the resurgence resurgence stuff i needed so for my evos um I was I only had one Titan Trox Ultra, so if you played me over the weekend, you probably didn't get to experience this. I maybe only got him out twice on the whole weekend out of those games I played. Um, kind of sucks. Uh, I tried really hard to get another one. I'm still trying hard to get another one, um, but for the weekend, I only had, uh, uh, was able to play one. Um, but when you get Winton out, he's a 2,000 power, uh, 20 attack monster, and he's really fun to uh, play with. Uh, and you're playing Ventus, so the five cost really isn't too hard to work around. Um, you might differ with that, but in actually playing this deck, I'm telling you, five cost isn't that hard to get with Ventus. Uh, but moving into uh, Mantanoid here, I have two of the Hyper Mantanoid Ultra. Uh, if you know how this card works, uh, depending on how much energy you have, the B power or the attack power goes up with that plus the one that he already comes up with. So usually I'll be sitting around nine or 10 energy by the end of the game. Uh, I would use this for like an 11 attack, hopefully get this out. We're sitting at 20, 31 and then ATDU over here uh, has uh, 20 or 10 attack 
Oh, when he evolves. So that's a four cost uh, Titan Dragonoid Ultra. People are calling it ATDU uh, on the Reddits and whatnot and Discord um, for Orlis Titan Dragonoid Ultra. So if you see that, don't ask a question. Uh, it's ATDU. Um, interesting Bakugan because, of course, he is all the factions. Uh, so this gets through your good flips, your free flips. Um, it uh, it's just kind of a interesting Bakugan to work with because it does make the opponent think differently once it's out, uh, and it's a twelve hundred B power Bakugan. Uh, that's not awful. So when my team was fully evolved, usually I'd be sitting at two thousand, thousand, twelve, uh, twelve hundred here. So I was usually pretty happy with that. Um, so th there's that. Let's see if I can fit all these guys in here. Yeah. So uh, there's my Evos there for you. Now let's talk about my heroes only have one hero and that is Winton. I got three copies of Winton. Um, again, Mono Ventus. You've seen this general idea of Mono Ventus on this channel before, so I don't need to explain Winton. But uh, when you open a Bakugan, you may energize a card from the top of your deck. This is your main energy uh, ramping tool. Uh, so that is Winton. Uh, Self explanatory card. Turn four, hopefully, turn three. Uh, you're actually getting that Winton out because of some other cards. Um, so, again, I didn't have everything I needed, so I had to move some cards around, uh, just kind of squeeze out enough stuff. But what I did with this deck, instead of really focusing on the ramping and trying to get like the Winton bonus or anything like that, I didn't think that that was very viable. So what I did was focus the deck around being able to fight in a Bakugan, you know, fight when both people stand. I wanted to be able to match up as much as I could to like Mono Aquas or Aquas Pyrus or... Um, you know, things like that that are going to get you a lot of B-Power, or uh, Aqua's Chaos. Um, Chaos has a lot of high B-Power cards. Uh, I wanted to be able to fight against that, even with my, you know, 300 B-Power or my 500 B-Power Bakugan at the beginning. So what I did was focus B-Power heavy. Um, I actually, because I had to move stuff around, I was only playing one copy of this. Um, and card pool-wise, I just couldn't really get it out. This deck was built with proxies differently before this, but um, one a Tropic Blast, uh, just a uh, minus 200B, um, and if you have the most energy cards in play, minus 400 for one. I thought that that was you know reasonable, at least, to put in here. Uh, the next one, of course, is going to be three copies of Nature's Power. That's the Ventist, one cost, minus 500. That's uh, arguably one of, if not the best, early game Ventus cards in the game. Um, just subtracting 500B from your opponent is pretty nasty. Usually takes off all core stuff. It's up a 650 shield, and they'd be left with a 150 bonus. Uh, but three copies of that for sure. Um, that's Those are my one cost. Moving into my two cost, I have uh, three turn to energy. Kind of my staple Ventus card because I'm playing Winton and this, but I'm not really playing any other energy ramping cards uh, besides a uh, flip card that I have here in the back of the video. Um, turn to energy is really cool. Turn two, uh, say you win turn two. I normally roll my uh, Mantanoid out turn two, try to win that battle so that I can get my turn to energy out at the end of turn. I pay my two and I get me an extra energy for the turn. Uh, that sets me up for turn three, playing an energy down and being able to play my Winton. Uh, so that is the plan for these two guys here. Uh, more two cost. We have three copies of Piercing Scream. Uh, one of my favorite battle cards, really. Uh, two costs for minus 400. Uh, it's just a quick two and Inventus, you know, ratio wise, it's really like a one cost towards the end of the game because of all the energy I'm going to have out. Again, I'm not focusing the ramping, but I'm still doing it when I can, but I'm focusing the B power. So right now I have, you know, three different or six, seven different B power lowering or altering cards. Um, this card I didn't play too often. This is solar powered. Uh, it's a three cost. You can energize this uh, uncharged, and you may re-roll. Uh, this isn't my only re-roll in the deck, but is one of the cheaper Ventus re-rolls, so I just felt like I had to stick it in there uh, because my Trox was acting up on me, and Dragonoid I have trouble with, so I wanted to make sure I have protection for that. And the re-roll, of course, if I open with that re-roll, I would get to charge with Winton, so it definitely doesn't hurt me that I'm playing re-rolls in this deck whatsoever. Uh, but uh, my favorite card out of the deck, and probably Envy... MVP card of the weekend is definitely this. Uh, this is a four cost Tangle Vines. Um, it is minus 800B to the opposing Bakugan, and you may re roll your Bakugan. 
Um, when I would miss and I had this in my hand, I felt extremely good about it. And um, it, it really helped me. It helped me win the game against SEMO. If you want to go check that video out, uh, it'll be in the card at the end of the channel, at the end of, at the, end of the uh, video here. Uh, you can go check that battle out. But this card definitely came in handy. I think I played it twice in that game. And just subtracting 800 B power, even if you're playing like Aquas or something like that, and you're getting the huge wave slash or tides or boost, anything like that from Aquas or... Uh, bone defense from Chaos. I can counteract that with this and give me a chance to get my Bakugan back out on the field and hopefully hit my Magical Shield or my 500 uh, Helix um, to help me. Um, very dangerous card. Again, it's a four cost, really. And in, in terms of playing Ventus, it's like a two or three cost card uh, because of you know energy ramping. I'm saying that in a relative way. Um, and uh, I, I put this out of order. I have some two cost cards here. Um, uh, going into Shell Shield, minus three for each Ventus Bakugan in your team. The cool part about ATDU is that he is all factions, of course, so he can be Ventus for me. So uh, later in the game, I would have three Ventus Bakugan. I could subtract nine damage away from the opponent's Bakugan. This is this deck's only might of Cindy's counter, Mac counter, uh, basically, you know, Cindy's uh, uh, power or attack damage decks. Um, this is really my only way of getting around them. Uh, that deck is very much a, not auto lose, but a high percentage loss for this deck. So if you're trying to run Mono Ventus, I'm telling you now, it's not good whatsoever against Might of Cindy's unless you're playing different cards, okay? Again, I was focusing B power because I would assume that people were using Chaos and Aquas more at what we were going to, and I wanted to be able to fight that. Uh, I ran into probably two Might of Cindy's decks, and it was very hard for me. I might have beat one, but I definitely lost to one. Um, if you played me and you played Might of Cindy's, uh, post in the comments and kind of say how that went down uh, to help me out a little bit. Uh, another two cost tier to get rid of the heroes. Of course, I have one with nature. Kind of sucks because they get an extra energy out of it, but I'm going to be at turbo uh, pretty much anyway. So I didn't really care. I just wanted to get rid of the Dans. I wanted to get rid of uh, opposing Wintons if I had played a mirror, um, Stratas, stuff like that. I wanted to get that stuff out of there uh, because I didn't want my opponent to be doing that well. Uh, three cost here. I have Deafening Roar, which is a three cost, and it make sure my camera is catching all of this. You can't really see this. This is one with nature. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, I'll take a picture of it uh, and post it for you guys to see the whole list. But uh, Deafening Roar is a three cost. It's minus 600. So again, I now have one, two, three. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 B power altering cards. Um, that are really going to help me. Obviously, this deck gets smacked against anything with Shadow Strike. Um, again, I didn't say this deck was the best thing in the world. I built it to be me. I like my playstyle. I like this playstyle, being able to fight with all these B-Power altering cards. Uh, so I have a lot of B-Power altering cards. Uh, talking about that, um, I have one copy of Crystal Quake. I, I'm not sold on this card yet because I like the draw. Um... And if I have turbo, your opposing Bakugan gets 700, minus 700. Um, I didn't play this card, I don't think, maybe once the weekend. Um, turn four was a busy turn for me. I was either getting my Winton out or having to use Tangle Vines or having to fight with two of my uh, you know, cheap fighting cards here. Um, so turn four or five were busy for me, so I didn't really get an opportunity to play this card. Um, so that's something I would definitely work on changing out uh, it's a new card. Uh, I still really haven't even gotten to play it after the testing. We've been playing a, a lot since we got back. Um, that's a changeable card. Interchangeable, I guess you could say. Uh, great Ventus card, Oaken Shield. Uh, this adds to my arsenal of fighting cards here. Um, Turbo, if I have the most cards, I play minus 900. So that and Tangle Vines are my biggest hitters, and uh, th they really did help me a lot. Tangle Vines, again, MVP. But um, Oaken Shield, obviously, with ATDU, I'm getting those. Uh, or, excuse me, wrong card. Um, with, with all this stuff giving me energy, uh, I, I would at least be at turbo. I wouldn't be ramping super hard. So uh, it did give me a chance to play. Uh, the flip card I was talking about earlier that's helping me with the energy is Photosynthesis. Um, kind of nice because it's a chance to get, because I'm normally in turbo anyway, 
my uh, Tiger Reflex is going to be free, which I guess since I said it, I can put it down now. Uh, play three Tiger Reflex. Good old Tiger. Um, that's going to be free, usually anyway. So at any point late in the game, if I need more energy, if I flip this photosynthesis, I get two energy, which I'm normally going to have sitting around anyway because of the ramp. Um, it's a free turn to energy for me. Not free, but two costs, but you know what I'm saying. It's another turn to energy, so I have five cards in my deck that are going to help me get some more energy out. Uh, well, actually eight if you count solar powered. I just never really used it uh, that much. Um, but anyway, yeah, so basic... Uh, basic Ventus deck here guys um it's kind of broken uh up a little bit because i had to replace proxies and had to play with what i had and stuff like that and we were just short on resurgence so i couldn't play too many things um and again this focused on fighting not on ramping so it's not the traditional sense of mono Ventus that people talk about um and again i'm not recommending this as a super competitive deck whatsoever I am just playing it because I think it's fun and it gives me a chance to fight against the big B-Power decks. Um, I, I went head-to-head -head with Mono Aquas, I won, I went head-to-head -head with like Nilius, I was close with those things. Um, so I, I don't know, it's a fun deck, if you want to build it, try it out, go for it. Um, but I will, uh, I'll be posting the picture on Twitter, uh, probably post it in some discords or something if people want to try it out. Uh, this is my best, semi-best version of Mono Ventus I've built. Um, Titan Tracks Ultra, Ultra's great. I love them. I wish I had two more to put in this deck. I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about how any of these interactions worked or if anything happened that you wanted to know about or why I played something, again, I focused this on B-Power. But anyway, post it in the comments if you have any uh, questions or concerns on why I'm a crazy person playing Mono Ventus. But um, if you have any comments like that, just post them down in the comments and we can talk about it. Uh, see you guys next time. I think we're going to start recording some more battles here shortly. I had to get through all my Momocon stuff, which I think I did now. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, if you guys have any questions, post them down in the comments. Check out Matrix Mats. Link in the, uh, link in the description. We're trying to get our Patreon going a little bit, so check that down in the description, too. Uh, I'm going to have an announcement about that here coming up soon, hopefully, uh, to kind of boost that up a little bit. But other than that, guys, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will see you next time. See you later.